What is Infinity's vanadium flow battery technology used for? We all know the importance of energy storage to our renewable energy future. After all, we don't have control of when the sun shines or the wind blows. And energy storage makes renewable energy reliable and available. And batteries to provide that storage till now have mostly been lithium ion. And yet there's a strong need for a battery that's reliable, non-degrading, non-flammable, and one that will work for years and years and years. And that's when the vanadium flow batteries come in because they store the energy in a non-flammable electrolyte, a liquid, that gets pumped through the battery. That's why they're called flow batteries and provide that energy storage that we're, that many of our customers are looking for. Those customers might be commercial industrial, you know, factories or distribution centers. We have municipal utilities such as water treatment plants that look to take the solar energy that they're already creating on site and make it reliable and available throughout the day and, and evening and night. Uh, grid services provider another set of our customers and uh, those are utilities or they might be providing services to the grid to make power more reliable or flexible a great example of that is the energy super hub oxford which will be the largest flow battery in the uk when it's installed and a, a third segment is off-grid uh, the mining sector for example has need for electricity that is not connected to the grid and they are looking for ultimate reliability uh, for water pumps, for all kinds of issues around mining. Um, and it's also true for rural electrification. How does vanadium flow battery technology compare with the more conventional lithium ion technology? As compared with a conventional battery technology, including lithium ion, where the entire electrochemical system is contained in a battery cell. We, a flow battery is kind of a hybrid of uh, uh, those conventional battery technologies with technologies uh, that we've uh, adopted out of the fuel cell industry. Um, and specifically what that means is that we have separated the, what I would call the power generation capabilities of the battery and the energy storage capabilities of the battery. And the way that we do that is by having the liquid separate from the power conversion device. Um, what we can do is we can be, you know, very, more, very much more um, accurate in how we combine the power and the energy side of the technical system together. Practically speaking, what that means is that the energy portion of the battery is contained in a liquid, hence the, you know, the flow in flow battery. And inside our flow battery, the, the working liquid, the working material is, a metal, is, is the vanadium metal. Um, what that separation of power and energy allows us to do is to have very accurate control over how the electrical, electrochemical process operates. And we can optimize, you know, discharge, how the charge and discharge happens. We can optimize the ratio of power to energy. And we can control how that charge and discharge reaction happens in a much more uh, concrete way. What that control allows us to do is to design an electrochemical process that fundamentally does not degrade as you go through these charge and discharge cycles. If you, if you look at the degradation that happens inside a lithium ion battery, for example, it's related to the, the, sort of the, the, the electrochemical changes that happen every time you go through a charge and discharge cycle. In a flow battery, in our flow battery, you don't have those changes happening. The energy is always held entirely in a, in, in a liquid. And so because of that, we don't get that, that, that degradation of both the energy capacity and the efficiency of the battery cell on every charge and discharge cycle that you see, um, for example, in a, in, a, in a conventional lithium cell. Fundamentally, the, the materials that are embodied in the vanadium flow battery are both extremely low cost and highly recyclable. Um, I'll talk about the, 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 the recyclability aspect first. Um, the, the, we talked about the separation of sort of the power and the energy portions of the battery. All of the energy is stored is in the vanadium electrolyte. 
And that electrolyte is completely either reusable or recyclable in, its, in, its, in, in the form that it's used in the battery. It can be either reused into other batteries in the future because it has an essential, an, an, what is essentially an indefinite life, or it can be repurposed back into other you know, industrial and commercial uses of, of vanadium. Um, aside from that vanadium electrolyte, the, the remainder of the components in our system are very, very, very much conventional, you know, conventional materials. Um, you know, we usually say that 98% of our product by weight could be recycled in your curbside residential recycling bin. It's, you know, made of steel, aluminum, you know, commodity plastics, very, very conventional. It's a very, very conventional material set. When you compare that with for example, lithium-ion batteries, there, where there is, you know, the, the, the ability to recycle those is very difficult and not very well evolved and quite expensive. We think that gives us a huge benefit in terms of the overall sort of life cycle cost of implementing and recycling this, uh, this technology. That's the sort of recycling side. You also asked about, I also mentioned sort of the fundamentals of the materials themselves. And again, you know, I sort of refer to the, the, you know, the comment that I just made about, you know, these being made out of very common sort of commodity materials. Um, you know, I think where, where, we, where we are more expensive um, than lithium is in some of the, you know, the processing costs. I mean, we're talking about comparing a battery that is comparatively new to the market versus one which is comparatively mature. And so there are you know, massive industrial operations built around getting lithium ion batteries at very, very low cost. What we found in the marketplace is that for the majority of projects we're looking at right now, we are at you know, very comparable cost, you know, either slightly higher or lower, depending on certain aspects of the project as compared with lithium. But in the long run, because of the simplicity of the technology and how it works, and because of the fact that we use these very common commodity materials, we believe that our overall cost position is going to be far, far lower. The final comment that I would make on the cost side is that there's always sort of two aspects of, of costing. One is sort of what is the product cost on day one, and the other is what does it cost on a full life cycle basis. And because our technology and our products have a 25 year life associated with them, the total cost of ownership over that period of time is far, far lower than incumbent products. Um, you know, anyone who sort of has a, a, a mobile phone knows that, you know, the lithium battery is after sort of a few hundred to maybe a thousand charge and discharge cycles over a couple of years has fundamentally degraded and needs to be replaced we are in effect amortizing the value of our battery over a very, very long period of time, 25 years of daily heavy duty charge and discharge service. And because of that, the total cost of ownership is far, far lower than anything else currently available in the marketplace. What differentiates Infinity's products from the vanadium flow battery technology offered by other companies? The fundamental, so the vanadium flow technology has been around for, it's been in the market for 20 years or so. The fundamental difference that uh, we've embodied in how we deliver this product as compared with everyone else in the market is that we focus on building absolutely standardized turnkey battery modules. Ours is the only vanadium flow battery in the world that ships from the factory in a 100% functionally complete configuration. Um, so, um, you know, whereas, uh, you know, a lot of other vanadium flow battery companies are either built as something that looks like a small chemical plant, it's very much constructed and engineered on site, or as sort of, you know, pro products that are, you know, very much bespoke and sort of need to be, you know, um, configured and have some assembly done on site before they can be totally functional. What that standardization gives us is it gives us the ability to access the ultra high quality and ultra low cost that comes from manufacturing a product under controlled circumstances in a factory. And what we now have in the field is, you know, a fleet of, you know, 170 or so of these absolutely identical vanadium flow battery units. 
that's the biggest fleet of flow batteries that have ever been deployed by anyone anywhere. And what that absolutely identical fleet has given us is a, a, a data flow and a, um, you know, an amount of information about the performance of those devices so that we can take that information um, and, and, and use it to continually improve on our existing product. How big is the global flow battery market at present? And what share are you aiming for? First of all, we have to look at the role of energy storage um, as a market, and then we can look at the uh, size of the vanadium flow market as part of that. And the, we know that as we are transitioning to using renewable energy, the lack of control that we can exert over when the sun is shining and when the wind is blowing um, means that energy storage is in very, very important part of that transition uh, to make uh, renewable energy practical. Therefore, all of the estimates of growth um, in energy storage are just tremendous. Uh, it, moving to billions of dollars um, or billions of pounds um, uh, or billions of euros <laughs> in any measure um, per year. Uh, the the vanadium flow battery portion of that has been very small. And in fact, that's our entire uh, goal as Infinity is to be the first truly commercial offering of vanadium flow batteries into the market. Up till now, as Matt described, uh, most of the batteries that have been created have been one-off projects or limited production runs and not really yet a viable commercial product. As such, our goal is to get a meaningful percentage of the, um, uh, of the uh, global energy market, which will be very, very large. We're not in a position to disclose specific numbers about our future goals. Um, but what I can say is that, um, that we see enormous potential because of the benefits under certain circumstances of vanadium flow batteries. We see that there's enormous opportunity for in front of us. What was the rationale for forming Infinity? Flow batteries have been around for many years and a number of companies have been developing them. And uh, the two of those companies, Red Tea and Avalon, have both been working very hard to bring uh, the vanadium flow batteries to commercial applicability. Each of them have been very much in that development stage and uh, the rationale really is for the two development stage companies to come together into one commercial stage company. This is based on the very complementary strengths of each company. Avalon had a very strong focus on building a superior flow battery based on the experiences of its founders and, and, and team members. Red T based on its experience had a great deal of strength in the commercialization side while also having strength in the product side. The combination of the two means that there's one company with the geographic focus across both North America from Avalon and UK and, and EU from Red Tea Energy. It has the complementary capabilities in terms of commercialization, taking advantage of the superior project analytics that Red Tea has brought to bear in this process. And putting all of this together, along with um, our, our UK and London stock exchange focus has allowed us to be a commercial alternative where we have all of the ingredients necessary to be that commercial alternative to lithium ion batteries that we've been talking about. Thank you. And now the final question, do you feel that the amount of funds you've recently raised will allow you to achieve your growth plans? We um, were very pleased at the support of our investors and shareholders um, and, the, and, and some new uh, uh, shareholders and investors in this deal, especially given all of the challenges uh, that, were in the, that we were encountering right at the time when we were doing this, uh, this merger process. So we, were, we, we actually were doing this in March of this year. Um, we didn't raise as much money as we wanted. Uh, to initially, um, but we raised enough uh, 
because we already have had substantial investments in both companies, uh, b companies especially at Avalon in, in terms of building a, a world-class product and, and at Red Tea in, in building out commercialization capabilities, um, we have enough money um, in the bank to meet requirements for important projects coming up, one of which we've announced is the um, Energy Superhub Oxford. This is a project done by Pivot Power, uh, which is now a division of EDF, um, and that's um, and going to be the largest flow battery ever put into uh, the United Kingdom. The we have the funding required to advance the other projects that are on um, on Matt's pipeline of projects that he just discussed. So yes, um, we will have to pay attention as we always would anyway um, to all of the aspects of costs and um, and where we're deploying our capital. But um, we're quite confident that we are able to demonstrate to our investors and shareholders the growth potential that we see for energy storage and vanadium flow batteries participation in this very large and growing substantially market. 